Back in the early 1970s, specifically in 1974, a man became president with an interesting background. He was perhaps the greatest athlete ever to become president, though he was known to stumble a time or two. He was a very intelligent man, a graduate of Yale Law School, though people made fun of his intellect. He was someone who was known as a common man. He, he buttered his own English muffins. He smoked a pipe. He liked to swim in the White House pool. And once he appeared before the reporters with a big knot in his forehead, and uh, he said he ran into the end of the pool because he didn't see it coming. His name was Gerald Ford from Michigan. And recently, a, a good writer has written a huge biography of him, uh, An Ordinary Man. But he stabilized the country when there was chaos after Watergate in the final days, especially of the Vietnam War. He gave some famous words when he said, our long national nightmare is over. But when he became president, he was the only man ever to not be voted in as president or vice president. And he had a problem on his hands. The former president, Richard Nixon, had resigned under pressure and there were dozens and dozens of lawsuits against President Nixon. What should President Ford do? Should he let the legal system run its course? Should he let the desire for vengeance that many had run its course? Should he let the loud voices have sway? Ford made a crucial decision. With the counsel of a minister that he knew apparently back in Grand Rapids, Michigan, he decided to pardon President Nixon, which meant all the legal troubles and the bills were now off the table. People yelled for Gerald Ford's head. But the reason he took such an action to pardon the former president was because he'd received some counsel and the counsel was that it was time to be merciful. What's it mean to be merciful? I want to draw your attention today to Luke chapter 6 and verse 36. Jesus says, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. That means it's a characteristic of God to be merciful. The Old Testament says God is merciful using a word which is close to the word for womb, that God has a a tender compassion. The verse in Luke, Jesus said, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. Now what's striking about it is you know some other verses with mercy, of course. So you might remember that in the Beatitudes of Matthew, it says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Or you might remember that in the parable of the Good Samaritan, uh, Jesus asks the lawyer, which of the three was a neighbor in Luke chapter 10, and the answer is the one who showed mercy. Here's the twist. Those are different Greek words than the Greek word for mercy in Luke 6 and verse 36. For the Greek word for mercy there in Luke 6, 36 is found only one other place in the New Testament. Job, the book of James chapter 5 and verse 11, referring to Job. You know, the outcome of the Lord's dealings with Job, James says, for the Lord is merciful. Does mercy mean a get-out-of-jail-free card? Does mercy mean an unconditional pardon? Well, we get a hint from Job's experiences and James' use of that word. Mercy is a transforming and at the same time comforting mercy. So in other words, the Lord both transformed Job's circumstances after the trial, at the same time the Lord comforted Job and even rewarded him for the trial he'd been through. That tells me this, that God's mercy is transformational. It draws people into relationship with him. So when I give someone a free pass, it may make them happy for the moment, but it may neglect drawing the person into a relationship with me. That God's mercy is transformational. It enriches and strengthens the relationship. So when the Lord says in Luke 6, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful, 
It's a relational mercy. It's not just signing off on a ticket for someone or signing someone's free pass. It's drawing them into a transforming relationship and that's what God desires with you. To draw you into a transforming relationship, removing your sins as far away as the East is from the West, their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more, but drawing them into a transforming relationship. And we are people who represent the mercy of God when we let them know about God's transforming mercy and his desire to bring them into relationship with him. This is your daily devotional for uh, Thursday, May 4th. I hope you're doing well. Seek first the kingdom of God. Read your Bible and pray every day. Always remember us two questions. What's God doing? And what does God want me to do? Pray for the church. Pray for me. Seek to bring others to the great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I look forward to seeing you Sunday. God bless you.